This week in science, we're talking solar geoengineering, otherwise known as dimming the sun. See, as the impacts of climate change get worse, some very serious-minded people have started considering ways to artificially cool the Earth by reflecting more of the sun's light back into space. And yes, this is a controversial idea. It really does sound like something a cartoon villain might do. Since the beginning of time, man has yearned to destroy the sun. I will do the next best thing. Block it out. The actual concept is not to have a giant shield pop out of a mountain or something. It's to sow the middle atmosphere with billions of tiny particles, maybe sulfur dioxide or calcium carbonate. This would undoubtedly cool the planet down. We see it every time a major volcanic eruption sends smoke and ash into the air. And while extreme, the idea is gaining some major traction. Last year, America's National Academies of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine recommended a nine-figure investment into solar geoengineering research. It was not an endorsement of the concept per se, but a call to seriously examine it. Ultimately, the goal is to find an appropriate balance among all the strategies for responding to climate change. It's not to push solar geoengineering uh, to the front of the line, and it's not to advocate for deployment of solar geoengineering. It's really to figure out a whether or not further consideration of solar geoengineering ought to be part of the portfolio of response strategies. But a newly formed group of scientists and policy experts argue we shouldn't even go that far. In an open letter, they essentially call for a worldwide non-proliferation agreement, kind of like what currently exists for nuclear weapons. That means no testing, no funding, no deployment, no nothing. This is based on three fundamental concerns, the first of which is unintended consequences. We don't know, for example, how solar geoengineering would affect rainfall that would, would most likely disrupt the monsoon rains in South Asia and Western Africa ravaging the crops that hundreds of millions of people rely on for food. Second, even if we do it, there would still be too much carbon in the atmosphere, and it would hand an easy excuse to nations and industries for not achieving their carbon neutrality goals, making that problem even worse. And third, humanity doesn't really have a good way to govern something like this. Even the UN wouldn't have the political control to keep powerful nations from launching earth-altering projects unilaterally. These arguments may be compelling, but the debate over solar geoengineering is far from over, and it will only become more pressing as the immediate impacts of climate change get worse. With This Week in Science, Curtis Doring, City News.